Well, good. Come on in, there's plenty of space. <laughs> and it's great to see everybody here tonight as uh, we're, we're doing our candlelit service this evening. And as tra tra tradition is, we light our candles here as we count down to the, the birth of Christ. And the first candle that we light reminds us of God's promises to the patriarchs, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, promising that Abraham's descendants would be as numerous as the stars, promising that the, the Messiah would come through the offspring of Abraham's people. The second candle that we light reminds us of the prophets and all of the prophecies that were given concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. We're reminded of the prophecies that were given foretelling the birth of the Lord Jesus. The third candle that we light reminds us of John the Baptist as he was a voice crying in the wilderness, preparing the way, calling men and women to repentance. The fourth candle that we light reminds us of the Virgin Mary, that she was chosen by Almighty God to carry the Christ child, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So may we stand and sing together, O come, all ye, fa o come, all ye faithful. Father, at this 
Christmas time, we come to acknowledge the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come to give him all glory and all praise. We come to seek him and to adore him. Heavenly Father, we ask that you presence yourself with us and be with those who cannot make it here this evening. Lord, whether they're on beds of sickness or not well, or whether, Lord, they're occupied with family, we ask your peace and presence to be with them. We ask for your presence to be in every hospital around the world, that you would be with every service that offers help. Heavenly Father, grace us with your presence at this time. Be with those who are struggling. Be with those who are joyful. Father, we ask that you glorify your name in every situation. We ask, Lord, that you be with each person in our society, every boy and girl, every man and woman, and you reveal yourself to them as you revealed yourself to us. Heavenly Father, you are a mighty God. We thank you that you so love this world and that you sent your Son into it. And you use the weak and foolish things to display your glory and to glorify your name. Come into our hearts this evening. Forgive us when we do not seek you. And glorify your name in our lives. At this Christmas time we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And may we sing Silent Night together. Christ the Lord. 
This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. And in the book of Isaiah, the prophet wrote down these ancient words. <clears throat> Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourselves from the Lord. Your God, ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. But he said, Hear now, O house of David, it is a small thing for you to weary men, but will you wear, weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Curds and honey he shall eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that you dread will be forsaken by both her kings. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to our hearts as we sing together, O Holy Night.
But I've got to be honest, I love this time of year. <clears throat> I love this Christmas season when we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can't wait till we can have a service where we can have a special service to burn these masks and we don't have to wear them anymore. We don't have to be put on mute any longer. And you know this verse here in Isaiah 7 verse 14, it fills us with such hope because we've got something that we can live for that is eternal, something that's never ever going to wear out. Isaiah 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel meaning God with us. He appears on our Christmas cards. We sing of Emmanuel in our Christmas carols. And God, who cannot be worn out, promises this sign to the house of David that a virgin would conceive and give birth to a son. God does what no human could do as the virgin birth was, was God-ordained. It was God's idea and it was God accomplished. Every, even though King Ahaz refused to ask for a sign, God still gives an impossible sign, the birth of his eternal son, who would be born and would eat curds and honey. These were foods given to a weaned child. Eating curds and honey would symbolize the ability that Jesus had to discern both good and evil at a young age. The people of God also had the law of Moses to know right from wrong. They had the Ten Commandments. The people of God were always aware that God was omnipresent. And that means that God is everywhere, all the time, by his Spirit. In fact, King David wrote in the Psalms, he said, I love this, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. King David, he knew wherever he went, God's spirit would be there. God is spirit and he is everywhere. But in Mary's day, something incredible was about to happen on the great stage of life. Yes, God's spirit was everywhere. But God would be born in flesh. We call this the incarnation. God who is spirit would become human and take on flesh and blood just like we are. The Son of God from Mary's womb would become weak and vulnerable. A baby. And would grow up to save us from our sins. The weaknesses of God is far stronger than any human power. The foolishness of God is much wiser than our own human cleverness and intellect. And when Jesus is born, we have Emmanuel, God with us in the flesh. And all four Gospels testify of Jesus being God. In John's Gospel, the Jews said to Jesus, Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? Who do you claim to be? And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. 
so they took up stones to throw at him. Jesus called himself the I Am. In the old ancient scriptures, I Am was the name of God. When God appeared to Moses and spoke out of the burning bush. And Jesus calls himself, I Am. I Am God. The Jews then tried to stone Jesus because this was blasphemy. A man claiming to be God, claiming to be I am. The angels in heaven and on earth knew Jesus was God. As the angel Gabriel had told Mary to call her son Emmanuel, God with us. God gave himself as a sign King Ahaz dared not ask for. God's spirit is still in heaven and on earth. Jesus the I am eventually ascends physically back through the heavens and into heaven itself where Christ is seated right now this evening. The amazing thing is if we believe and have faith in Christ Jesus and we receive the forgiveness of sins from him, then Emmanuel, God with us, sends his spirit to live within our hearts. So our relationship with God the Father may be renewed and made right. And guess what? Every single thing that I've ever done wrong is forgiven. Forgiven, cleansed, made perfect. I get a second chance. I'm right with the Lord. I know when I die that his angels will come forth and carry me home. Because heaven is my destiny. Because I have put my faith in Emmanuel, God with us. And as I have put my faith in him, so he has sent his spirit to live within my heart. Because the apostle Paul says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? At this Christmas time, do you know Emmanuel, God with you? It's been a roller coaster of a couple of years. But we know if we have faith in Christ that he is with us. That he carries us. That he gives us strength. When we've been in isolation and in lockdown, God is right there by his spirit with us. And if we have received him into our lives, we become his holy temple here on earth. And he fills us with his spirit. A new year is coming. Why not plan to get to know Emmanuel and to walk with him and to live for him and allow him to change our lives and to see this world through the eyes of Christ from God's perspective and to walk with him because he truly is Emmanuel, God with us. And he looks for a heart at Christmas time to make his home in, so that we may become his holy temple here on planet Earth in Petrobark for his glory. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and let us sing, hark the herald angels sing.
Please be seated. And we finally light our final candle, the fifth candle, which represents the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the light that shines in darkness, that the darkness could not comprehend. Jesus Christ is our God, he is our Saviour, and he is our light. And at this Christmas time, may the peace of Christ be in you, and upon you, and all around you, and in your homes and families, now and forevermore. Amen.